Inner Voice, a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is the Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fujian podcast. Yep, it's me, Dr. Fujian Zay, a psychotherapist, author, and the originator of the awareness integration theory. Our conversation here with our guests are all about what matters most in our life, our minds, our thoughts, feelings, actions, more than anything today, the relationships and our fulfillment in this beautiful journey of life. Many of you have asked about our latest book and I wanted to share them with you. So the first book I wanna share with you that just came out a couple months ago is Intentional Parenting. And the Intentional Parenting is written with Two of my amazing co-authors, um, Nicole Jaffrey, Dr. Nicole Jaffrey, and Dr. Eileen Manukian, both experts in child development and early development, early childhood development. And we take this book and we go chapter by chapter from infancy to adulthood and um, show you whether you're a parent, you're a teacher, um, you're someone who works with kids, you're a grandparent, um, you are teaching at any level with children, it's going to help you not only look at um, cognitive development, motor skills and emotional development, but more than anything from the awareness integration theory, teaching you and uh, looking at how you could be with your children so that they can uh, grow up to be someone who's mentally healthy and um, and feels responsible and accountable for their life and has high self-esteem and self-confidence. And I think those really, really matter um, with us, especially when we're raising our children and to know what to do and how it impacts from what the latest studies that actually have happened. Now, for all of you who are uh, therapists or coaches across the world, this book is for you. Awareness Integration Therapy, Clear the Past, Create a New Future, and Live a Fulfilled Life Now. Uh, this book was forwarded by Je Dr. Jeffrey Zeig, and um, this book takes you through all the six phases of awareness integration, teaches you exactly how to use it with your client to have the um, the effect that you like and the uh, connection that you like with your clients and be able to utilize this in every aspect of their life. Pujan app is going to launch in January, so we're going to need a lot of therapists who are certified in um, awareness integration therapy, because I'm positive not only people are working with the app and love what they do and create a lot of great results, but a lot of people also tap into areas that need a little bit more work with someone. And some people just like working with other people. We become, you know, amazing mirrors for them and they like to do that. So um, that's the book for you. And you can get that from Amazon or my uh, awareness in, um, awarenessintegration.com or fujanzain.com. Today, and this episode, I chat with Blaine Elkers. He is a TEDx speaker, leading authority in personal implementation and consistency. He's the America, watch this. He is America's only Chief Results Officer. Yes, you heard it right. Only Chief Results Officer is a habit master with documented streaks of, I thought first was 1,555 days, but he corrected me because it's passed. And now he had 1,702 days in a row and counting. As a top LinkedIn connector, he's got over 25,000 first level connections. Blaine, undergrad, Blaine graduated from Purdue University and Stanford University's social entrepreneurship program. He's powered by Self-Fluence, a personal development and training company. He's excited to share with you ways you can take control of your life by taking control of yourself. We will be talking about his latest book. Napoleon Hill um, wrote his book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see how he got Napoleon Hill to write the book with him. And um, the book is Think and Grow Rich. And you can get to know him more, go to www.selffluence.com. Selffluence, S-E-L-F-L-U-E-N-C.com. I had a great conversation with him. Um, he's a great presenter. 
I even threw things about me on just onto the table so he could support me and he gave me great ideas. So I'm sure you will enjoy um, this conversation as much as I have. Now, subscribe to my podcast on my YouTube channel. I love to hear from you. Any comments, any conversations, just share with me. Connect with me through my website, foodronzane.com. Now, for all of you who are interested in actual self-help books, uh, get my Life Reset book. It's um, the Awareness Integration uh, Path to Create the Life You Want. And uh, I hope that you can go through the book and really enjoy the book um, and, and write, journal with it. And that way you can get the best, best, best out of it. So without further ado, here is Blaine Eck. Well, welcome, Blaine Elkers. It's so nice to have you. Oh, Dr. Fujian, thank you so much for having me on. And I'm excited. I've I've been listening to your podcast for a while. And you are, I'll go on record as saying, you are touching lives not yet born. Somebody's not even born yet. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, they're going to find these podcasts and they're going to find some tremendous value. So happy to be on today. Happy to share. Happy maybe to talk about a book that I have, but also just happy to serve in any way I can. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Now, Blaine, you have been America's only chief results officer. And you wrote, you said that you have a habit master with documented streaks of 1,555 days in a row and counting. Explain, please. Uh, yeah, so so I, I should have updated my intro because today was day 1702, uh, you know, in, in a row. But I will say that um, for, for me, how I became this uh, America's only chief results officer, really, there were these two different moments of what I call like dawning comprehension, where the light bulb goes off and you have this kind of aha moment. And that's what kind of led me down this path. And the first one uh, came when I was in college. Now, I was lucky, I think like most of the listeners and like you too, I've always been kind of a seeker, a seeker of knowledge. How can I do better? And I was in college and actually it was in a, a psychology, I think it was Psychology Today magazine. And there was this little ad where you could send away for an audio cassette. Now I'm dating myself. It was the 80s. Some listeners might not even know what an audio cassette tape is, but an audio cassette <laughs> program. Um, and it was the reading of an abridged version of this book called Think and Grow Rich. And it was actually read by Earl Nightingale, who ended up becoming one of my mentors. But I got this tape in the mail and I listened to it and I liked it. And I read this book. And what happened, the, the first moment of dawning comprehension was me realizing um, that what you think about, you bring about. Now, I, I made a little acronym called YTABA, what you think about, you bring about. Later, I did a, a TEDx talk about that. But the power, in I got lucky because early on in college, I realized the power my thoughts played, uh, you know, in the reality that I created. Now, I realized I couldn't control circumstances, right? But I could control my reaction to those circumstances. And that's what, what kind of made all the difference. So, so I had that idea. I actually met my wife uh, in college and we're still married 30 years later. So that's good. Um, you know, I had a lot of business success. Uh, and, and so that was uh, dawning comprehension moment number one. But the second one that kind of put me on a better, even deeper path was uh, I my degrees in computer science from Purdue University. And I was working for a, a software company and I came back from this long business trip and my son, Bo, he was about one year old. And so I come home and he's like, give me the cold shoulder. And, and, and so I said, hey, Beth, what, what's wrong with Bo? Like, is he sick or what, what's going on? She says, no, you were gone so long. He kind of forgot who you were. And I'm wow. like, wait, what? That that like hit me like emotion. That hit me like deep. Uh, and then I realized when I was a kid, I came home to an empty house. And anyway, I had all this stuff. But the moment of dawning comprehension and, and what happened for me is I made a clarifying decision that night 
that no matter what, I was going to be a work from home dad, that I wasn't going to let this happen again. And so it took me a year. I started two businesses, kept my full time job. But a year later, uh, because we're kind of conservative, we want to have money in the bank. And, and my wife said, look, when you're other thing, they didn't call it side hustle back then, but but when your side hustle is making more money than your regular job, by all means, you can leave. Um, but anyway, it took me a year, but I did that. And, and so I broke free uh, from that job. And that was 27 years ago. So for 27 years now, I've been this kind of work from home dad. Kids are out of the nest now. But that gave me the freedom to pursue what I really liked, which was helping people take control of their lives by taking control of themselves, something I call self-fluence. And so uh, I started helping people. I started helping mastermind groups. And they said, hey, you're helping us get so much results with your Y Taba, what you think about, you bring about, that uh, we're going to call you the chief results officer. And I said, I, I like that. That's a cool name. So I looked up and, and nobody was really using that name. So I went to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and I got the registered trademark. So the R with the circle, which is a little more powerful than the TM. Uh, uh, but that that is how uh, maybe a little bit of a longer story than you wanted. But that's why I ended up becoming America's only chief results officer. And I really feel like, you know, God and the universe wants me to help people to take control of their lives by taking control of themselves. And and most people need some help in that area. They, they know what to do, but they have trouble getting themselves to do it. I, I call it personal implementation. So that's what I've been studying. And I've been studying it a lot. And, and over the years, I've created different frameworks, which we could talk about uh, to make sure that you can keep a new habit. I call it the 21 second habit, how to create a new habit in 21 seconds, not 21 days. So we could go, we could do a deep dive on that. Other frameworks about hacking head trash, which I know you're, you're big at helping people kind of get through things, but, but anyway, let me stop there and let, let you talk for a little bit. <laughs> well, you have an interesting co-author because the name shows up as uh, this book is written uh, by, let me show everybody your wonderful book. Uh, it's by Napoleon Hill and Blaine uh, Elker Sr., Think and Grow Rich. And this is also a book study edition. So um, how did you get Napoleon Hill to write with you? <laughs> ah, that's a, it's a good question. So what happened was um, I read the book in college and I actually still have it right here. I read this paperback version. Uh, this is my actual one from the 80s. Uh, and, and I read that book. And like I said, I had some success and I had enough success that I was able to purchase for a thousand dollars. I purchased this book, which is one of the original 5,000 copies. Wow. So <clears throat> this is the original printing uh, of the 5,000 copies. And when I opened it up, uh, there, the first page here you know, said, what do you want most? And the first two pages were these like instructional pages. And I'm like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I went and got my book. It's not in there. Those instructional pages weren't in there. And I realized that the original book was different from the one I read. Uh, and so that led me on a journey to try to find, because I was helping people. I wrote a little guidebook about how to get the most from the book. And then I went on this journey and I finally found someone who was selling the original version. So I used to buy it from him and then he passed away and he stopped selling it and I couldn't get the original anywhere. So I did some research and luckily <clears throat> that original version was in the public domain. So I was able to take that out of the public domain, add my stuff and create what's called the derivative work, which I can copyright. And so the book study edition is actually three books in one. It's that original uh, version of the book. <clears throat> then it's my my guidebook, about a 40 page guidebook in the front. And then every chapter, I did a lot of book studies with, with people over and over and over. So I have it it's set up where I, I tell you what to look for before you read the chapter. And then after the chapter, I kind of do a book study with you. What are the most important things? What was the most important sentence? You put in your own answers, but I, but I also share my own. So it's kind of book study, original version and guidebook kind of all in one. It's beautiful. It's an amazing way of uh, creating what was there, which was very influential and workable and bring it back into a way that it can be works today with what is relevant today. Because um, I remember listening to some of the um, audio uh, from Napoleon Hill and Although a lot of the things can be done for today, because these are just, you know, masterpieces of conversation. But I think that when you bring it into examples of what's relevant today, it really goes um, into the heart of people who can, who don't have access to these books anymore, or they're not even in their 
you know, kind of like reality frame anymore. So thank you for yeah. bringing that back and, you know, adding um, all the experiences that you have to, to and making it easy for us to read and, and work through. So let's now go based on what you have created um, in addition. For example, you talked about a 21 um, 21 um second, second. Yeah. rule. Yeah, yeah. So so 21 second habits. Um <clears throat> basically you habit, know work with me, work with me. Yeah. First habit is to get me to stop with sugar and carb. Work okay. with me. we have 21 seconds. Well, okay, so there's two different things here. So the 21 second habit framework is how to create a new habit in just 21 seconds, not 21 days. Now, bad habit elimination, <clears throat> that's a that's a different animal altogether. Uh, you know, and so if you were gonna say, hey, I want to decrease sugar and carbs or something like that, okay. then we would kind of go through a framework for bad habit elimination, which so is different than creating a new habit. Okay, the creation of new habit is. Thank you for uh, uh, clarifying that. Clear the new habit would be to portion control um, each um, uh, each section of food that I eat. Right. Okay. So, so if you want to um, <clears throat> create a new habit, like portion controlling, let's say, um, <clears throat> there's kind of two key things to cr to creating a new habit, uh, and, and so. For example, let me uh, I'll give you let me start with one example on how I I came about this this uh, discovery is my wife <clears throat> she used to have daily nearly daily migraine headaches right uh, and so the doctors said hey Beth you have to um, keep this headache log very detailed headache log uh, weather barometric pressure what she would eat all these things and she could only keep the log for a couple of days then she would lose it or she'd forget to do it <clears throat> and she couldn't keep that habit. For more than two or three days um but then one night when she was brushing her teeth i realized that she was and we all are so, so when we talk about like new habits um or creating new habits i want everyone to realize that you're already a habit master right and you already know how to create habits and you are kind of driven by your habits and so my wife was brushing her teeth and i realized she is the two minutes just like the dentist recommends two minutes in the morning and two minutes at night Right. Uh, and so she does that. No willpower required. Right. So the first step is is habit linking. So when you're creating a new habit, you link it to a habit you're already a habit master. at. So, for example, she put the headache log underneath the toothbrush and the toothpaste. Now, when she brushed her teeth every night in the morning, she filled out the log. She went not she couldn't do it for two or three days in a row. She went 90 days in a row doing it every single day. Why? Because it was habit linked to a habit she was already a master at. So habit linking is, is the first key. The second one is what we call urge surfing. And that is that it's more powerful if you can actually surf the urge that you want to do something and use the power of that urge, urge kind of surf the energy behind that urge to get you to do that new habit. So for example, I mentioned um, you know, at the top of the show, my current documented habit of 1,702 days in a row. How that came about is I said, look, there's something I want to do every morning, a new habit. I want to do this Bible app, but then I want to do a mind shower. Now, now, most people, they will take a physical shower in nearly every day. But how often are they washing their mind out? I mean, you know, just like our bodies accumulate dirt and junk and garbage, our, we, we accumulate head trash every day on an ongoing basis, especially if you're watching news or, or social media or any of that stuff. So I wanted to clean that stuff out every day. And so I thought, okay, what could I have it link that to, to make sure I do it every day? What, what happens without any willpower on my part every single day? And what happens for me is the smartphone every morning, sometimes the alarm is going off on it, but every morning without fail, without any willpower, without any thought on my part, I open up that cell phone. Right. And so what I did is I moved all the apps off the homepage of my cell phone. I just put the two apps, the Bible app and the, and I use headspace, which is a meditation app to do the, the mind shower. And then every day when I wake up, 
what I do is I, I open my phone and there those two apps are. But below that, at the bottom of the phone are four apps. And one is my text messages, which always has messages waiting for me. And I really want to look at those messages. My son lives in Denmark. He usually texts during the night. Like I surf this urge to want to check my email and my messages and, and what's going on in the world and what orders came in and all that stuff. I surf that urge and say, no, no, I can't do those things that I really want to do until I finish these other two things. And that's, and these apps, they document how many days in a row you've done them. That's why I have kind of documented proof of the 1,702 days. So, so that the concept there is uh, linking, urge surfing. And then the last part is leverage. And leverage is what can you do, uh, you know, to kind of help yourself, but both the carrot and the stick, what kind of reward can you give yourself psychologically? Hey, if I do this new habit for, for, 10 days in a row, I'm going to get some kind of, uh, you know, I'm going to buy this new watch I want or something like that. What kind of reward? And then also what kind of leverage or penalty? If you don't get it done, uh, you know, what kind of small penalty could you have? So both the kind of the carrot and the stick, uh, you know, uh, works for that. And the other nice thing psychologically is once you get three or four days in a row, you don't want to break that streak, right? You want to break the chain, right? So the chain of success kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so, so to bring that back around, if you're looking at, at, at portion control in, in your eating, uh, you know, if you're trying to set up a new habit, right? So you you want to control your portions, uh, you know, what? how can you do that? What what kind of thing are you already doing? Uh, you know, in, like, let's take in, in your case, is there something that happens at each meal for you that you could that you could link to? Um, I mean, I could link it to an hour, definitely time wise, which I haven't yet. Right. So I have a full on starting probably about 8am all the way to 9pm. And it's like back to back, you know, with different things that I do. Um, so right now, it's more like whenever available, I just jump into the kitchen and you know, see what's in the refrigerator. So one of them is that I don't plan because the planning is not there. So you know, I'm, I'm there, I do whatever. And, and then, you know, with it, when we, my, my husband and I actually sit down to have dinner, um, then it's like, you know, this amazing food. So we just kind of like have, you know, whatever it is. So at this point, it's all over the place. So right. if okay, I would, well, maybe uh, time is a good structure. Well, I mean, for you, something like that, with, with that kind of habit, you're probably, looking at something that you can pre-decide, right? So, so that when you go to eat, you're reminded of what you want to do, right? Um, and so, for example, you know, they'll you, you can have, well, for example, like plate size, right? So plates back in the 50s were like, you know, a third of the size they are today, right? So so one portion control method that some people use is they just eat with smaller plates. That That's one. The other one is there's the plates that are divided into say three sections, right? So then, you, you know, so, so this idea of having this kind of special plate or special size plates, is just enough of a trigger to 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 link to to remind you, hey, let's not you know let's not o o overdo that, right? Uh, and then if you you know you you have uh, you know some kind of urge to eat more, right? Uh, then how could you surf that urge in some way, right? So they say, oh, I feel like eating more. Let me drink more water. You know, every time I feel the desire to eat more, or knowing that, hey, I can have some more later if I if I want to have that, right? Um, you know, and then figure out some way that you could track that. So so that if you do portion control for X number of days in a row, then, you know, then you reward yourself in, you know, in some nice way. That's a great idea. I'm going to order those portion control uh, <laughs> sectional, um, the, the sectional plates, right? That they have. Right. right. I mean, it's almost, that one is more a little bit, instead of a new habit, that's almost a little bit more down the track of a bad habit elimination. Like I have the habit of overeating. Right. And so in, in that, you know, in bad habit elimination, what we look at is, is the why, you know, you have to have kind of a, you know, why do you want to do it? You need a big why. Um, and, and then you need a substitute habit, right? So you need to have something to kind of substitute, you know, for, for that other 
for the, for the bad habit, right? Uh, and then you have to remove or minimize the cues and the triggers, right? So, so if you say, look, I want to portion control. Okay. Let's, we, we don't want to overeat. So, so coming up with a good reason, like, why do you not want to overeat? Like, what is that reason? And maybe it's weight, maybe it's health related. Uh, I, I remember when I saw my father-in-law, he smoked all the time, couldn't quit. And then one day he quit cold Turkey and he didn't have a cigarette for the remainder of his life, which was like 12 or 15 years. And all it took was one, one big why. And we said, look, Papa, you can't be around the kids, the grandkids when you're smoking or you recently smoked. Uh, and that was all it took. He had a big enough why he quit, never had another one. Uh, the substitute habit. So for you, if you say, I don't want to overeat, uh, you know, what, what's the substitute habit? What, what is something like you could drink more water, you know, or you could have something that's, you know, low calorie, like a salad, you, you know, so, some kind of substitute in, you know, for kind of the, the, the overeating, uh, you know, so, side of it as well. And then minimize what are the cues and triggers? Like what, what are those things? Like when you, the next time you have a, you overeat, right? Think back in that moment, try to figure out what was the cue or the trigger that caused me to do it, right? And a lot of times it's stress or, you, you know, you had a bad day or, you know, it, it's some other emotional thing that you're just kind of eating for the comfort of it all, uh, you know, but you may also discover some other reason for the overeating. The food was really good. Uh, you ate so fast that you didn't, um, you know, you didn't give your, you didn't give your body chemically enough time to say, I've had enough. Right. Uh, what? What my what? When my wife and I, when we tend to overeat, we say, okay, every time we take a bite of food, we have to re we have to let go of the utensils completely. Uh, right. We also tend to talk more during dinner when we do that. So you take a bite, you have to actually release the utensils. Um, and, and sometimes that's enough, just that slow down, uh, you know, and maybe the substitute is better conversation, you know, uh, or, or something like that. Uh, you know, sometimes we have these little table discussion cards that are on the kitchen table too, that, that, you know, you can just pull a card out and, and ask kind of a, a very open-ended question. Um, you know, that, that's kind of a lot of great to things. Do. Yeah. Mine, I think is just basically just loving the taste and it's just this part of the, the taste covers and, and, uh, uh, you know, holds the stance of, I just want more of that pleasure. And I, I'm bringing extra, um, some, um, examples of so that it becomes really real, not only for me, but also everybody who's listening to us. I'm sure everybody has one thing that shows up in their brain and is like, ooh, how can I do that? Uh, you also in your book have the creating your bring about statement. So share about how to create the bring about statement. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so in, in the book, um, this book, Think and Grow Rich, it's uh, it talks about think and grow rich, but the rich is, can be riches of any kind. And he talks about financial, obviously, but he also talks about, you know, uh, harmonious relationships, your health, right? So it's bringing about anything that, that, uh, that you want to bring about. And so your bring about statement is where you come up with this statement, um, which you want it to be very specific, right? Very specific about what is it that you want to bring about you know, in your life, uh, or it could be in your business, right? And so you want it to be, you know, kind of specific and measurable, uh, you know, achievable, realistic, have a timetable, be energizing, and also be recorded in some way. That's, that's, we, we always, we call that smarter kind of goals. But the bring about statement is you talk about what is that thing you want to bring about, right? Uh, you know, and so that could be uh, a personal thing, like it could be something like, um, you know, I, I want to exercise, uh, you know, every day for 30 minutes between now and the end of the year, you know, and so now it's got the end of the year, it's got a time, it's measurable, is it achievable, doable, it, it is, it is, you might want to pre-think to make it as easy as possible, right, uh, but that's the, the bring about statement, maybe in your business, you want to reach a certain level or a certain number of clients or a certain sales figure, but you want it to be very specific, so it's not just like, I want to build a bigger business. That that's your brain can't target in on that. Um, and and the parts of your brain, this thing at the back of your brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS, that's the thing that that takes all the inputs and decides what the conscious mind gets to see. Um, and so as you begin to build this bring about statement, your subconscious mind is going to be helping you through the bridge of this reticular activating system, putting the right things that can make or help you get there if it understands where you want to go. Um, the reticular activating system, a good example of how that works is 
my son, when he bought his first car, it was a maroon Acura TL. I, I didn't even know what that car was, but he sent me this picture. He was so happy. It was kind of emotional. And then if you wouldn't know it for the, for the next about two weeks, People are pulling up in that car next to me. That's all I see in the lot. They're everywhere. All of a sudden, they're in my whole life, right? Did, did, was it like a conspiracy where they just drove all these cars around me? No. What it was is they were always there, but I wasn't tuned into them. But once I got tuned into them, then I saw them everywhere. And it's the same thing for what you want to bring about. The more exact you can get, the, the better picture you can create for that, the better. So, so the bring about statement initially is that thing that you want to bring about, very specific with a timetable, you feel like it's achievable and measurable and that kind of stuff. And then Napoleon Hill uh, in the book, he takes it a little bit further and he um, he believed in the law of attraction with action. Uh, so my little saying, what you think about, you bring about. You have to play an active role in bringing about. It's not just think and happens. Um, and so the bring about statement says, you you know, this, you, whatever it is, and then in return, you're going to give what? Like, what are you going to give in return? If it's your business, you may say, I'm going to give an extra 10 hours a week. Um, you know, um, if it's, uh, you know, your health, you know, you might say, I'm going to give my body 30 minutes a day. I mean, what are you going to give in return, um, you know, for, for that thing? Uh, and then I like to break it down further and have you create an initial plan, not a full plan, doesn't have to be complete, but an initial plan and then an initial next step. And that next step needs to, we'd like to say, dial down the resistance so it's very easy to get moving, to get going, right? The next step might just be, you know what, this weekend I'm going to spend 30 minutes really, you know, thinking about my plan, right? And that's kind of your next step is to put that 30 minutes into your calendar and get it started and get it, and get it going. And so people, you're going to find that your level of hope goes up, um, you're, you're, once you get clarity energy comes from getting clear and then beginning to move in that direction so if you get clear i call it you're going from point a to point b i call it your point b once you figure out what your point b is and you start to move towards it that's where the energy comes from then kind of done becomes the engine of more you win the battle of the brain chemicals you're in a good mood you're you're getting stuff done and you're moving forward now sometimes you can have some head trash and it's hard to get started but once you get started and once you get moving uh, that that's the key and the goals are really there to give you the zest and the energy for life um, you know, not necessarily be like deadlines of disappointment. Many of my bigger goals, I didn't reach them first go around. I moved towards them though. I moved towards them every time. And that was energizing, uh, you know, and then, hey, if the deadline, like I've got the end of the year deadline, I'm not where I was, where I wanted to be, but I made some great progress and I'll reset my goal here, you know, uh, at the beginning of the year. And it's interesting that you say that. I remember one of the goals that I had was to bring about awareness integration into universities. And especially to the, um, you know, that age group, um, because it had shown um, that when we've done the studies, it has shown that it minimizes uh, depression and anxiety. And one of the most important groups who had high levels of depression and anxiety were the college students. And also it was right in the adulthood, which if they had that kind of um, skills that could really uh, support them in, you know, building their life as an adult. And we strategize, we were, we, we went through all of these processes and it didn't happen. And um, we just kind of like held that con construct. And, you know, you have, uh, you have in your book, you know, you talk about desire, you also talk about faith and kind of visualizing the desire, holding on to it. And like you just said, even if the first round didn't work, it was held. And then it was interesting that, um, some people changed within those, the dynamic. And then they came to me in from one of the universities that we had actually done the um, work. And then they said, oh, we, we don't have even um, a mental health track. So would you like to create the mental health track? And I'm like, yes, and this is what I wanna do. I want to put the awareness integration theory and put it as a, one of the first one and they agreed. And, um, you know, systematically, we first put it as a pilot and then it, it went in. So it was more like, yes, the first round, it didn't work. And just holding the vision and knowing that it'll show up at one point, like I'm doing, I'm doing the act, I'm talking, I'm going, I'm knocking at the doors. And some doors were just not the right timing or the right, you know, essence or the vision didn't align. And then suddenly, <laughs> suddenly from another angle, the vision 
got because the angle that I was going toward, which was very specific, didn't have a place in that in the bigger institution. But when they found, oh, the big what is bigger for us and it's important for us is the concept of mental health. Now you can fit this theory within it because that's exactly what it does. Um, it suddenly showed up. And, um, you know, the first course um, I started teaching in the university. Um, so it's, whole, as I'm hearing you also, and I experience it, is knowing exactly what you want, but being open that it could, you could create it in so many different angles. And it doesn't have to be created only in the vision that you have. But if you hold the vision, it just, you know, uh, other ways that that vision can be created and aspired, it all, um, it, it gets created, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And, and you, you know, you had to have the faith there, right? Uh, belief in see things not seen yet, you know, that that was going to come about. And you also had this like deeper desire for it to come about that, that wasn't extinguishable as a, as a, as a desire or, or a flame or a light inside of you. Right. So that was, so you, you, you hold it there. You're right. And then the universe, you know, will, at some point align with you or you're going to hear something from another direction right i mean that's that's happened to me many many times it wasn't exactly the way i thought it was going to happen you know but but it came in kind of opportunity knocked from another door uh you know might have been the back door but still you know i was open to it because i knew what i was what i wanted right i knew what my desire was i know why I'm here, you know, and so things that are going to move me in that direction, you know, I, I'm going to go with them, but I'm, I'm holding the space, right? I'm holding, holding the opening. I'm tuning in. I'm looking for, you know, the, the maroon accurate TLs. I'm looking for them and, and you're going to find them. And, and it turns out that a lot of life, I think, ends up happening really based on the lens that you are looking at life through actually ends up <clears throat> dictating the reality like your physical chemical reality. What I mean by that is, is um, this concept of what you think about, you bring about. But the lens, <clears throat> like if the, if, the, if the beginning of the day, I said, look, I'm sorry, but today is going to be a really <clears throat> bad day for you, right? If I told you that in the beginning of the day, and then you go out and you're almost hit by a car, you'd say, oh, Blaine was right. I was almost hit by the car. You'll be shaking. What else bad is going to happen? Your physiology would really be nervous and tight, and you'd be scared of at every corner. Right. Um, and that that was the circumstance. And that was your lens. But in that same morning, if I said today's going to be one of the best days of your life and you're looking at it through that lens and the same action happens, you're almost hit by the car. You say Blaine was right. I was almost hit by the car, but I was spared. I'm alive. The universe, God, they still want me here. I still have things to do. You're happy. You're excited. And your physiology is totally different. The circumstances didn't change, but your lens did. And that ends up really creating your whole reality. And that's how people create their realities. Now we can't, you know, it's not what happens that determines our life future. It's what you do about what happens. So yes, bad things are going to happen. Bad things happen all around. We all have them happen. Um, but what you do about it, that's the thing that really makes, makes the difference. And I do think that lens. So in the morning, every morning I do my mind shower, but I really try to clean that lens off and make sure I'm looking at the world in, in, in a lens that's, uh, that's going to serve me. I'm also aware of uh, mine and a lot of my clients and I, my students as I work with, which is the duality of the desire and, and what you want to create. And I watch this with myself a lot, which is the duality of I want to reach, you know, 8 billion people. And then on the other side is, oh, I don't want to be noticed. I don't want people to see me and I want to hide and isolate. And it's funny because the two of them are such an op opposing construct and they, they, they show up almost similarly at the same time. And at times they were flipping. So it was like, yes, I want this and I want that. And that desire comes about. And then suddenly like this stops and then the other one comes because I've been like meditating and really watching the, the awareness part of my technique is constantly watching. Now I'm seeing them side by side. And I look at it and I'm like, okay, that is so adorable and cute, but we're not going to get anywhere because there's such an opposing concept that as long as I don't come to terms with one of them and honor one of them and do something about, like put one of them in action, they kind of, it's almost like 
taking one step forward and then backward and then one step forward and then backward. And it's almost like, you know, I'm not going anywhere because there's two opposing needs and desires, or there's one opposing desire and one opposing need, and they're, you know, clashing uh, at each other. Um, what are your suggestions from your perspective and your methodology? Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the age old question <clears throat> is this competing priorities, right? And the, 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 the main one for a lot of people is this concept of work, you know, business and family, right? And, uh, you know, you, you, you want this greatness in both. Uh, and so the first thing that, <clears throat> that you can do, uh, well, well, the, 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 the simple thing is, is one of my mentors, Jim Rohn, he said, wherever you are, be there. So the first thing that you can do is that whatever you find yourself doing, really be there, be in the moment. Don't, don't be at work thinking about home and then being at home thinking about work. <laughs> Wherever you are, be there. That's the first thing you can do um, is to really pour yourself into the now, what, what you're doing on, what you're working on right now. When it's work time, work. When it's play time, play. When it's family time, family time. And really, really be there. So that, that's the kind of tip number one. The second th th thing is to really be honest with yourself and figure out, is there a higher priority on one over the other? Now it can move, you know, um, you know, family, when our kids were young, family was a very high priority. Uh, when they, when they left the nest and went off to college, it, do, it doesn't have to be that as high a priority as it once was, right? Um, so, so life can change and there are going to be periods of out of balance. You may need to say, you know, family, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like I, I, talk, I talked about that one year where I probably pushed my marriage to the brink, uh, you know, when I started two companies and had my full-time job and we had our, our first child and then we had a second one on the way, <laughs> you know, so, so uh, bad timing there, but it was total out of balance, uh, you know, for that period of time. But that out of balance allowed me later to swing the pendulum all the way over to the family side, which which was great. Um, so so that's number two is periods of of out, out, out of balance. The next uh, one is that that where can you get better? Right. You, you know, Jim Rohn, my mentor, he, he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. And I was like, whoa, a b bingo. Right. And I realized as I started newer businesses, I said, oh, I want to start a business that has no daily operations, like no daily operations on my part so that I have the free time, you know, but, but, but it can make a profit without me having to do any of the work. Right. Uh, you know, so, so just having that improving myself, gaining wisdom, you, you know, to figure out how can I do that? How can I build a team and make it profitable and make the price points correct? How can I build this thing, you know, so, so that it can run without me. Right. And so getting smarter, you know, can allow you to then, you know, um, spend more time in the areas that that you want to, to spend time in. And then another last one is that if you always have these competing priorities, what's you know, and, and this, you know, as a psychotherapist, you, you might be able to take people deeper, but something's underlying that, like some, either the fear of the, of success or the, the fear of too much success or the fear of not being successful, or what are other people going to think? Or you have, maybe you have old head trash about what, what money is and how hard you have to work. And I see people make a lot of money and they're not working that hard at all. Uh, you know, so, so, you know, there could be some underlying, I call it head trash, that limiting beliefs that you might have to deal with if you're constantly, you know, um, you, you know, having those things go against each other. But those those are a couple of thoughts on it. Beautiful. Everybody, get this book by Napoleon Hill and Blaine Elkers, Think and Grow Rich. Um, and you have the book study uh, edition and you can go through the, um, you can actually go through the book and it has um, places that you could jot down and write and you could go step by step through the book. Blaine, anything we haven't touched upon that you really want people to know? Uh, I, I think the only thing would be, you know, to really understand the power of your mind. It's a lot stronger than you think. Uh, and, you know, you know how to use it. Like you don't need anything more. You know, you're just probably not maybe utilizing it you know, to its fullest, you, you are a habit master, you, you are a productivity master, and you've shown that before in, in your life. So just honor that, acknowledge that, and, and lean into, uh, into the power of your mind and, and pour into that mind, right? I do a mind shower in the morning, but, but, you know, feed, feed your mind. I do have, um, one of the things I, that I've been, 
really enjoyed doing was kind of a bucket list was a I did a TEDx talk. So I think that's the last thing where in that TEDx talk, which is only like 14 minutes, I talk about this concept of white table, what you think about, you bring about. And I, I show you a little bit of a, a mind hack or a way to remind your brain of your bring about statement more than 100 times a day in kind of an elegant, si simple way. So I think that would be, if I leave uh, the listeners with that, if you want to get that, you can just go to blainetedx.com, B-L-A-I-N-E, T-E-D-X.com. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, we'll be connected then. If I can help you in any way, happy to do it. Um, and where can they get through your book? Uh, the book is masteringtgr.com. So I did kind of a self-publish on it, masteringtgr.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'll leave the listeners with this. The bad news. The bad news is time flies. The good news, you're the pilot. So pilot well, my friends, pilot well. Beautifully said. And for all of you who are with us, create an amazing life for yourself and everyone around you. And until next week, bye-bye.